Good evening, and welcome to the St. Petersburg Republican Club. Um, I'd like to uh, talk to you tonight a little bit about the session and, and uh, a little bit about an, uh, an experience that I had, but I got a tip from a colleague of mine today, and, and he said, you know, Larry, when you're doing these talks and speeches, uh, you know, you have to remember that, that they're like a woman's skirt. They need to be long enough to cover the subject, but short enough to keep them interested. So I'm going to endeavor to do my best to, uh, to go there and, and, and not lose you, uh, keep it short and sweet to the point for the most part. Um, you know, let me just catch up a little bit on what happened in, the, in this uh, last session. I passed a bill, a miracle of miracles and all that mess, uh, and, and it just had to do with you know, better government, size and scope of government, keeping regulations out of a, an industry, uh, the child care industry, this particular bill. It also addressed some unlicensed activity that was taking place on Craigslist, and uh, it was a constituent-driven bill, and, and I was very happy to uh, get that through both the House and the Senate and have it signed by the governor. Uh, we balanced the budget, of course, you know, without raising any taxes, reformed Medicaid, education, and pensions. Uh, some pretty important stuff. And then, you know, going forward, uh, we'll address the redistricting, reapportionment in this session uh, and, and balance the budget again with a little bit of a shortfall, a little bit less, but still uh, a challenging session for sure. I have four bills filed so far. Uh, the first one, let me just ask you, has anybody renewed their driver's license lately? Brand has. Okay, so you know what's going on at the Driver's License Bureau um, with the um, identification of, you've got to bring uh, your life history. Uh, women have the most challenging time if they've been uh, uh, through a second marriage, perhaps, name changes, those types of things. Jay Baruti related the story that Linda is not Linda Baruti on her driver's license. She couldn't get it. She couldn't prove it. And, and they wouldn't accept it, so she had to renew under her maiden name. She can't get it in, in, the, in Jay's, uh, you know, with his last name. So this bill seeks to correct that and to stop them from scanning that material into their database. It, there's your identity, your complete life identity in that. They'll destroy it. I, the bill calls for them to destroy the current information and to no longer, you, you would have to prove your, that, that you, uh, uh, you know, for the first two times, we don't want anyone to, to get a license without proof. But no more scanning and destroy the, the information that they have collected. Uh, that one's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm working on it. How about red light tickets? Anybody got a ticket yet from a camera that wants to admit it, that will admit? Stop more suddenly than Right. Well, and, and all this, I have a bill that addresses the yellow light timing. You know, it's not consistent from county to county, city to city, uh, all over the state. And this will make it a standard, and it will lengthen it by about a half a second, uh, just to make sure that you have enough time to get through the intersection safely. It's really all about safety, as we know. Yes, sir. If you're gonna, if you're gonna speak, please stand up. Okay. I was going through the intersection at Canyon uh, Fourth Street. Yes, sir. It's coming. When you're driving west and the sun is going up, you cannot see the light. Yeah. If it turns yellow, or you, you don't know. You're just telling the person in front of you. And, you know, because you stop, you don't want the person behind you to yeah. stop. Yeah, there's some, there's some problems, problems with it. You could report that to the city. They may uh, they may look into to some relief there, because that is, they get more right on reds there than anybody. I would yes, like sir. to say that I really got suspicious. Right after all the news came out about that company getting the big contract, I was watching the left turn signal at certain major intersections. And I know now, you know what happens with left turn signals. Not everybody starts at the same time. Some people are sleeping at the light. Right. But even allowing for that, let's say that on a normal day, if you have a slow start, if you get four cars or five cars through, and on a good day when someone gets right off, you know, at what they're supposed to, you get maybe eight or nine cars. And I've been at this intersection a number of times. And Ever since they, the tickets started coming out, it's been five cars get through and the light changes. Tougher to get so through. So yeah. uh, something's happened right. to the light sequencing because I've noticed that they're shorter mm -hmm. and the yellow is definitely shorter than it used to be. 
to be him. This should provide some relief for that. That would be great. Uh, the, uh, my third bill is the uh, Unborn Victims of Violence Act, and, and it addresses really a, a, you know, an attack on a woman who is carrying a child in the womb, and the child dies as a result of that. Uh, this would uh, make it a homicide regardless of the age of the child. So it, it, it automatically takes out the quick child in the language that we have right now in the determination. It's just automatically a homicide. Um, my fourth bill is a construction industry bill, and again, it streamlines regulations. That's the, the, the key to this one. It uses technology instead of carrying the plans in and, and the, the old way and, and having it uh, you know, have to be corrected. They can file the plans electronically and seal them so that it, it speeds up the process so that if we have a project that's ready to go, it's funded, and the plans are being held up sometimes, they can make the, the corrections quickly and uh, get, that, get that project moving. We're going to take advantage of the technology that's available to uh, assist our construction industry, which, you know, has it, it's, it's hit, been hit the hardest. I, I think there are still about 30% unemployment in our construction industry. So this is a big push to help them uh, get some jobs started quickly. Um, so that's, the, that's your legislative update. And, and then I'd just like to share a um, Maybe two quick stories with you. The one is, is a real local story. Um, a friend of mine, maybe you've been to Athenian Gardens uh, before, and had a Greek sandwich of uh, Spiro Gogas, uh, passed away recently unexpectedly uh, during a surgery. But I was reading the story uh, about it, and, and I remember talking to him, and I'd been stationed on the island of, of Crete in Greece in the Air Force, and I knew how you know the Greek people they were, at least this was in the 70s, and, and I, as I'm reading the story, I was touched by, you know, his parents came here and worked as, as dishwashers in that restaurant for two twenty-five an hour and brought him in into that business, and, and, and that's the way it, it was in Greece. The, the kids worked in the restaurant. You'd, you'd have a table, a little kid would come over and, and take your order and bring everything out to you. It's just how industrious they were, and, and, and I remember uh, him telling me, you know, when his parents came, they were told, and it was one of the reasons they came, that that America, that the streets were lined with gold. And, and, and when they got here, they found out it was true. And, and the gold was opportunity, he said. That's all they want, needed was an opportunity. And, and you know, it's just a, a, to me, it just touched my heart. And it was, you know, amazing. And, and we're sorry for, you know, his passing. But, but it's something I think we have to remember what we have here and, and how important it is to just safeguard it and protect it. And on that note, my, my other experience was, as I went to get the car fixed the other day, I got into a conversation, the, the guy noticed my plate, it, it's got state legislator and the district guy, and he said, oh, I worked on another one, 54. Frisch had been in there, and, and uh, he'd been in another accident of some kind. It's like $900 worth of damage. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we're talking about you know, different things, and he's from Honduras, and he's telling me the story of, of, of what happened in the Honduran uh, country, how he came here to escape the uh, revolution that occurred slowly, but then suddenly uh, at the end when they, they took over his country, and, and how they, you know, even how they were still sending money back to, to the country, and, and that people didn't work there, and, and what the horrible conditions were. And as I'm leaving, he printed off a, a, a copy of something, and, and he said it's sort of a mirror image of the Ten Commandments, uh, and it has to do with Lenin's Decalogue uh, and, the, and, and sort of a manual to, to seize control. It's just a blog, um, and, and Maureen checked it out a little bit because she's good at the research and was analyzing it a little bit, and, and we couldn't really tie it to the, the ten things that, um, you know, that he put into this manual, uh, this Marxist manual. But I think, I think they're worth sharing with you, uh, and we'll just go through them pretty fast, but uh, uh, the words that, that the first four start with are corrupt, infiltrate, divide, and destroy. The first one is corrupt the youth and give them absolute sexual freedom. And we know where, where the music is, and the movies are, and the television are, and, and where Planned Parenthood is, and all of this, corrupting our youth. That's the, that's the number one thing. Infiltrate, number two, and take control of the mass communications media. And I, I'm pretty sure we can all 
you know, you can think of several examples of where our media is today. Divide the population into antagonist groups. Encourage arguments between them over social issues. He said that was real big in his country, dividing you know, rich and poor, black and white, and, you know, for us here. Um, and, and we know what's happening with the, the somehow we're going to take it from the most industrious people and give it to the least industrious. You know, how that works out. Just ask the people in Greece about how that's working out for them. Destroy the people's confidence. Number four, destroy the people's confidence in their leaders. What's the approval rating of our representatives in Congress right now? I mean, there's no confidence in our country moving forward. It's the lowest it's ever been. So they destroy us. They, they just came out of the latest poll, 7%, which had the plus or minus is 4. So basically, they could be, they could three. be almost 3 or 2. Uh, I was just saying, the latest poll came out and said was 7% Congress. And the error margin on the poll is 4%. So, I mean, it could be as low as 3%. And remember, this is from a service technician at, at the dealership where I'm just having my car fixed and we're just talking about things. And I don't know why, I mean, he just printed this off and gave it to me. Because, well, we were talking some politics before. Um, number five was talk all the time about democracy and republic, but when the opportunity arises, seize power. And that's what they did in, in the Honduras. Six is cooperate with the drainage of public funds, discrediting the image of the country, especially overseas, and create panics within the population through the launching of an inflationary process. $14 trillion in debt. When's the inflation? You know, we know the inflation is, is on the way. We just, just win is, is more the question. Number seven, encourage strikes, even if they are illegal, in the country's key industries. And we know that's, that's of course, a, a union tactic, uh, no matter you know, whether it's legal or illegal. Eight, promote riots while conspiring to prevent intervention by law enforcement. Or does that sound familiar? Does that sound a little bit like the Occupy? Occupy. Occupy. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of that going on. Number nine is cooperate actively in destroying the moral foundations of society and honesty and trust in government promises. Um, I mean, that's our greatest strength as a free people, is our morality and our honesty. That's, it, it, it's so important uh, for us to, to understand that, that it's to, the corruption of that will be the end. That, is, that, that, that was spoken through all the founders, that everywhere I read in, in, through uh, all, their, all their language, it was, it was always about freedom and would, would only be preserved through, a, through the morality, the moral and virtuous people. And number 10 is register everyone who has firearms in order to confiscate them when the time comes, preventing them from opposing the revolution. So these are just, it was just a, a chance encounter. I mean, they had five service managers there, and, and I ended up with... Uh, Mr. Ray's from, from Honduras, and, and we had this conversation, and, and we talked about these things, and, and, it, and it just struck me that I should share them with, with somebody, so I'm, you know, I was glad to have the opportunity um, to do that with you here tonight, and, and I think that you know, if we only take away maybe one thing from all this, it would be a, about, elect, you know, as, as far as elected officials go, who we elect to represent us, and how important that is.